This is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, I was there in 2006 in the theater. I saw Borat. Yes, Borat in the theaters. The film that really put uh, Sasha Baron Cohen on the map. And I have his love interest. I'm going to call her the romantic interest on the show with me today. Yes, and she is hilarious. We have the wonderfully hilarious Lunell. How do you do, Lunell? Hi, honey, how are you? Did I pronounce your name correctly, Lunell? Yes, Borat and yeah. Lunell. Lunell, Lunell, yeah. okay. Yes. Well, you know, uh, um, like I, I can't believe it's been 15 years. Where does the time go? Where does the time go? Jeez. Wow. So, uh, you know, uh, I'm very, very happy to be doing this, doing this on Zoom because our station has been closed since March 2020. I can get back into the theater and watch movies, but I can't get in our small little station. That doesn't make any sense to me. But how is the COVID situation where you are? Well, <clears throat> I'm actually I live in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And L.A. has been doing some really good numbers. They've had days with no deaths and no diagnosis. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's really good for a place like L.A. But I'm actually in Texas because mm -hmm. I had had um, a, a, some surgery on my knees. And my sister had it before, like knee surgery. And I said, I want your same surgeon because after her knee surgery, she was skipping around like 17-year-olds. So I said, I want whoever did your surgery. So I came out here and I've been rehabilitating in Texas at my sister's house for, I have three more um, physical therapy sessions. Then back to LA I go. And in June, I go back on the road. So let me guess, Borat did the uh, surgery, right? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. This was real life. That, that no, no, no. And if you were, mm -mm, you wouldn't want to let Borat nowhere near your surgery. <laughs> well, I watched it with Jimmy Kimmel there on uh, YouTube the other night, uh, testing Did him you? for COVID. <laughs> uh, he had this look like it was one of those things you pick snakes up with, you know, that little, <laughs> you go, we're going to test you. <laughs> mm -mm. Before, uh, it was, it was, it was something else. Well, before we talk about, uh, Borat and coming to America too. I want to get some of your background. Um, how you got into the business? Uh, were you always interested in being a comedian? Because I've seen some of your uh, comic work, and I'll tell you, when Jerry Lewis says women can't be funny, he's so full of crap. <laughs> Because you're hilarious, Kate McKinnon's hilarious, Emma Stone's hilarious. I could go on and on. There's so yeah. many funny women. Lucille Ball, you one know, one of my one of my mentors. Yes, absolutely. I think mm -hmm. women are hilarious, which is probably why I'm single. <laughs> But give us the scoop on your upbringing and how you got into the business. Well, I'm, I'm the eighth of eight children. I have seven brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I was born in the South in Arkansas. I was raised in the Bay Area, San Francisco, Berkeley, Oakland, Bay Area, um, in the 70s and stuff. And um, uh, I got into theater and was very successful in Bay Area theater. And then I started working for this um, cable access black owned black operated television station called the soul beat television network and that's where i got a lot of television experience and then um the stand-up thing is a whole nother long story but it all meshed together and then when i went to los angeles I, you know because you have to move you have to move to the mecca you know we, and i had to go to los angeles if you want to make movies and television that is where you go. You know, if you want to be on Broadway, then you go to New York. If you want to be in a cabaret and stuff, San Francisco, you know what I mean? So um, you have to go to LA at some point. And um, when I went there, I was successful in doing stand up comedy as well. And um, it just sort of uh, snowballed, you know, 
I didn't see it coming that I would be making a living at it. Because when I started doing comedy, there was no $50,000 paydays or no shit like that. Maybe you might get $20 or $50, you know, if you're good. That's what it was when, when I was when I was starting out. So anyway, it's worked out well for me. And I'm glad I had the stand-up experience because that and the television experience even back in Oakland, because that just helped me when I got to LA. I didn't have stage fright. I wasn't coy, you know, and I speak up for things and got sort of that original bad girl of comedy um title. And uh and I rock with that. I embrace that. Everything is everything wove into each other, you know. Mm hmm. Did you have any influences, uh, comic influences that uh, that you looked up to growing up that influenced your act? Yes. And I still do. You had said Lucille Ball, Lucille yeah. Ball for her facial expressions and her animation. That's what I get from her. Joan Rivers, because Joan Rivers was very blunt and she said what, what people didn't expect her to say, being a nice Jewish girl, she was filthy but classy and she was right, wrote, you know, wrote it out till the end and I really respect her. Um, Moms Mabley just for being the first Black female stand-up that actually worked and, um, you know, paving the way sort of. And you know people like Jack A on two two seven. I take a little, a little something from the ones that I really love. You know Margaret Cho, and um, and you know all kind of people like that. There's a bunch of great girls, like you said. I think so. Yes, like mm -hmm. um, like I said, for somebody as celebrated as Jerry Lewis to make a statement like that, I was like, I I don't get it because um, I think. There are so many funny women. Movies like but, Bridesmaids prove yeah. that women can be funny. Yeah. And look at the um, the Oscar uh, MCs for the last two years. The, the, the two girls, um, you know, uh, Jamie, Amy Paula. I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that movie Sisters with yeah. uh, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. I think yeah, they yeah, were yeah, dynamite. Yeah. 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 So, but but the thing about it is, is, you shouldn't even let that bother you because this is a business where you are always being told you ain't shit, you ain't gonna make it. Rejection lives in the belly of the stand-up comedy world and the entertainment world too. You have to be so laser focused on what you wanna do for yourself that none of that matters. No, and, and you have to really know that you are talented and people have to tell you that you, that you are talented. And when you know that, and when it's acknowledged, you know, you let that shit roll off your back because if you need pats on the back and lots of affirmations, stand, stand up comedy is definitely not the place for you. You know, it's interesting because in preparation, uh, the other day I watched uh, a video of you uh, doing stand up. I can understand how you got in Borat because I watched this video of you in front of like, it looked like a senior's citizen's home and you were doing the whole vagina jokes and whatnot and you didn't hold back. And I, 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 and I said to my brother, who's my manager, I said, I'm so glad I'm having this woman on because there's so much more than Borat. And uh, <laughs> well, that, now with, with, uh, with, Okay, uh, I'm trying to work around it because of Borat, you know, um, some stuff was staged and some stuff was not, you know, with uh, you in the nursing home, were these people expecting this or was this all? Well, the nursing home yeah. bit that you're referring to was from a movie called Cat Williams' American Hustle. That was that scene. OK, that's not in Borat, but they're both as shocking. And the answer to the question, though, basically is. Well, here's a funny story. We were really at a, a, a senior center. Uh -huh. We really were. And there really were people coming to see their relatives on that day. They really, really were. And when they told me what I was going to do and show, showed me who I was going to do it in front of, 
I said, there is no way I'm doing this in front of them old people. There's relatives coming to see their people today. It's Sunday. And if somebody walks in here and sees me talking like this in front of them, I'm not doing this shit. I'm not doing it. That's what I told them. But they laughed so hard. And later they told me that all the seniors in the scene were actually actors. <laughs> okay. All right. They were actors. They were hired. <laughs> They had all the seniors in another area, and we had that room, and those were all actors, senior citizens. So I, I laughed my ass off. They pulled a good one on me. There you go. <laughs> but well, it came out looking hilarious, like, like I would do that, you know? Oh, it was great. It was great. I really liked Cat Williams in an under, uh, under um, rated comedy called First Sunday. Mm -hmm. Do you like working with him? Yes, I love working with Cat. It was the first tour I ever went on, and he took me around the country. And you know, I got to fly private for the first time. And um, you know, we had tour buses, and we were like little rock stars. And we were on the road, and we were killing it. And 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 he was my friend for a long time ago. We have a kid the same age. We lived both lived in Oakland at the same time and so that was like a full circle moment for me for me and him to be over here to be up here you know at at one point so i love working with him he's i love him he's one of my best friends well can you believe that borat is 15 years old i saw that in the theater and I'm like, where has the time gone, you know? And I love the fact that there was, you, there's so many re, recycled storylines, you know? Borat was really something cutting edge and different. And I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> now, uh, you, of course, played the uh, prostitute with the heart of gold. Mm -hmm. and uh we all love you in it and uh <laughs> invite you to the dinner party uh, <laughs> talk about getting casted in uh borat and how that process of course larry charles the director of the film he's a psycho too <laughs> he, he, he was, he's a psycho too he was perfect he was a perfect person to work for well, I had, I had got an audition just like you get a regular audition notice, you know? And so I didn't even have a car. I had my girlfriend drive me to the audition. It's at a big studio. And um, I went into the room and there was Sasha and Larry Charles. Now, I had never seen Sasha out of his Ali G stuff. So I didn't really know who he was and he cleans up well, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Larry was there looking like, you know, a bit of a mad scientist, you know, if you ever know what Larry Charles looks like. <laughs> and so um, Larry, now I didn't, like I said, I didn't know neither one, I didn't know neither one of them. And he says to me, he says, listen, I want you to, um, Pretend like you're a hooker and you've been, he, he, the scene, this is the scene he had me audition to. He said, I want you to pretend like you're a hooker and you've been invited to this fancy dinner party and you just want to entertain the guests with shocking stories being a hooker. Okay, so, you know, do something like that. And of course I did that. That was not a problem for me. Since you've seen my comedy, you know what I mean. Shocking, that's right up my ski low. So, yeah. um, so I uh, did that. And I also took Sasha's finger. This is disgusting thinking about COVID now, but I took his finger and I sucked it. That's the truth. And he probably was disgusted because I'm sure I think he's a bit of a germaphobe. Oh. I, I don't know if that finger sucking got me the role or if I was just that good, but there I, there I am, you know? <laughs> yeah, I love that first scene in the movie where he's got like all the children behind him and he's in his homeland there and he's got this gray suit on. 
He yeah. goes, I am Borat. You know, I can't do it justice. And he's <laughs> talking about his, his wife that uh, <laughs> hates him and, uh, yeah. and how he's going to go on this trip. You know, he's all dressed to the nines and everything around him is all trash. run down. <laughs> it's trash. trash. And he wore that same suit throughout the whole filming of the movie, whether it was hot or not, or wet or whatever, the same suit, so that it did get rancid by the end, you know, you know, toward the middle of filming because he did that on purpose as well. <laughs> well, I remember the first Halloween I was at after Borat came out. And it might have been the following year. There was a guy that showed up. There was two guys dressed as Borat. One was dressed up as him in the gray suit. And the other was dressed up as him in the Speedo. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. In the barely Speedo, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> in the barely Speedo. Yeah. <laughs> so Jeez. did... Um, I know you guys would have had a script, but... A lot of how much of this was improvised and how much were you not prepared for what he was going to do, but kind of went with it? <laughs> well, to me, 90% of the dialogue was improvised to me, mm -hmm. in that way to me. But the scenarios that we were about to do were strategically planned out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there were things they wanted us to do and beats they needed us to get. But how we got there was always a wonder to me. <laughs> and... Um, no, I was not always prepared for what he was going to do. Mostly, but not always. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It kind of reminds me, I, I interviewed back in 2015, I had Cindy Morgan on here, who was Lacey Underhall in Caddyshack. Oh. And she had told me about a, t uh, a scene in the movie where Harold Ramis, the director, had told her to go sit beside Chevy Chase at the piano. Mm -hmm. And she did not realize they were filming. Chevy Chase was doing this whole thing on the piano and singing mm -hmm. this wacky song. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, she said, if you look carefully, you know when I realize there's a camera on and I've got to just kind of wing it and go with it. And she does, and it was a great take. But um, so, was there a lot of that on Borat? I would say so because yeah. you couldn't, you couldn't, you 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 can't predict or rehearse what the other people are going to say. You see, even if we said the same thing, the other people aren't in on the joke, so. You can't predict what they're going to say. So that was the magic, you see. His whole, and then if you really wanted to delve into the meaning behind the film, to me, what I got from the film is that he was able to expose people for who they really are when they think nobody's watching. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that was the case with the... Uh... The college kids, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The drunk ones in the in the van thing, Kemper. Mm -hmm. And of course, and a, lot, and a lot of people, and a lot of people, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, um, of course, uh, the dinner scene was <laughs> shocking. Where he comes out to the table with the bag, but uh, apparently it's feces, you know. And... That was real too. Oh, was it? Yes. That was real feces? Yes. <laughs> well, now, the people that were at that table, they were not in on this? No. Oh. No. <laughs> they thought they were entertaining some dignitary from some, you know, when we would go to the different, because you, if, you if you have to give a, get another take of that dinner party scene, 
you can't do it with them again. So you have to go to a whole nother state, find a whole nother family and set them up. And what they were doing was looking for families that are aristocrats and right wingers in the in the town and they always host the dinner parties for the big charities and stuff like that and so they found a family like that who invited their other a couple of other bougie people and they thought they were about to entertain a very interesting dignitary from Kazakhstan and be in a documentary but this motherfucker came in there you know and and all the shit hit the fan and there was a scene where there was a scene where, um, uh, you know, because they fixed all this fancy food, all the oh, yeah. finest of everything, you know, Vichy Soise and, and bisques and everything, everything. And um, uh, he, uh, they said, you know, you'll have the first course and it's a soup of some sort, right? Probably a lobster bisque, probably, let's say. And 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 so everybody for the little napkin. And you know, Sasha takes the spoon, Borat takes the spoon and tastes it and goes, oh, that's disgusting trash. I can't, what is that? He says, I like regular American food and reach in his pocket, pulled out like a little Debbie cupcake type thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the people started getting appalled then, you know? So then when the hooker shows up, the black hooker, mm -hmm. right? In the south, south, south with a cowboy hat on and everything. They're like, what in the fuck is this? You know, no, I think party's over. Everybody, you know, we got to go. You got to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. The guy at the end of the table definitely was getting offended. Now, did they have to sign? They must have had to sign off on this to get have that in the film, right? Yeah, they didn't have to do anything, but they did. You see, everybody who was not the cast, and there was only five cast members. There was Sasha, Kinder Vidian, who played Azamat, mm -hmm. Pam Anderson, uh, myself, and another girl from Baywatch who only made the, the, um, the extra features that I was telling you about. Okay. Um, so out of all that money and uh, as global as that show, there was only four actors to pay. We made a shitload of money off that motherfucking movie. Everybody did. Because there was only four of us to pay. Five, you know. And, 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 and everybody else, everybody else signed a release. Because they were probably told something. And everybody's so thirsty. Everybody wants to be on TV. So they say, hey, we're shooting this thing. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, my God. Okay, well, what else? Not? Okay, what do you want to ask me? Da, da, da. Yeah, they, you don't have to twist people's arm to sign these things. No. No. Well, I got to say, there's something very endearing about the relationship between Borat and uh, your character. There, there, <clears throat> it was funny. But it was very endearing. There was something very honest about it. And even though uh, the people around the table didn't get it, there was something <laughs> beautiful. I'm going to say beautiful. There was something beautiful. I appreciate about it. you saying that. I yeah. appreciate you saying that. <laughs> well, I know what it's like because uh, when I came up in school, I was not very popular, I mm -hmm. was socially awkward, <laughs> um, I got bullied a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. but in a way, I don't regret that because it's kind of made me who I am today. You know, exactly. I can, I can emphasize. Yes, your character in Borat. I, I'm like, okay, I get it. They're against the masses, <laughs> you know. But I get it. So when you show up and Borat is just loves you, I'm like. I felt kind of giddy by that. <laughs> a lot of a lot of people did. I got a lot of love about our relationship. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't find it offensive. Um, I'm gonna be frank with you. Like I I'm a Christian. Yes, sir. I grew up in the church. I don't go to church anymore because yeah. of the behavior I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've seen, you know. It's okay to be like spiritual and not, and yep. not, you know, cause, 
we've all been let down by a lot of people in the church. Let's say. Yes. And I grew up in the church too, and I too am a Christian. And um, you know, um, so if you try to conduct yourself in a proper way, if you say your prayers and bless your food and stuff like that, and you're kind to people and you're not malicious, and you, you know, sometimes you can always listen to gospel radio, listen to some Christian podcasts and stuff like that, and you can always get what you need, you know, you, that's what we have come to is that we're not, you know, church is great. Let me just say this. Yeah. Black church is really great. You know? Oh yeah. And, yeah. And the I, Blues yeah. Brothers, for yes. example, they yes. really. No, <laughs> and, I, and I love black, the black church and yeah. Baptist church, especially. So it's not like we don't want to go to church. I really just, if you want to know the truth, I go mostly for the choir. And then as the word that we're getting from the particular pastor I'm listening to is pertinent, and that's right on. But as far as putting, when people used to fall in love with their preachers and all this kind of stuff, and you see how these motherfuckers don't let us down, let us down, and dirty shit, caught time after time doing dirty shit, it's like, okay, so you are, in fact, just a man. Mm -hmm. Just a man. And Jesus, he hung out with those that are... Uh... Like the me, least, <laughs> the least of these, you know, yeah, and yeah. I, I pick up on stuff like that. That's I, good. Like yeah. Borat, for example, he accepted everybody. Yes. He may have not translated well to everybody. Right. But he, he had, really loved a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I get the feeling that your character was the same way, you know, was very lovable and just uh, happy to be invited to this, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, Borat just loved her for her, you mm -hmm. know? But see, don't forget, he was with me, but he told me he couldn't be with me because he had to go to California and find his true love, who was Pamela, Pamela Anderson, and she didn't want shit to do with him, and he, had, and, and he had to kidnap her, and she ran away. So then in the end, he doubled back and came back home to mama, and the people will realize at the end of the film, if they watch very closely at the end of the film, when it's later, and we've been married for a couple of years, and we're in Kazakhstan, I'm the queen of Kazakhstan, but we got two little interracial kids at the at the end of, at our feet, at the end of the movie too. That's why with Borat too, when he had his daughter, and she wasn't biracial. I'm like, well, what the fuck happened to our kids? You know what I mean? And I was supposed to be in Borat too, but COVID disallowed us from going to Romania, which is where my scenes were. They had to cut costs and stuff like that too. But I got paid anyway. So wasn't that you know. awesome? They still paid you. Yes, that they did. tells me a lot. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. About uh the people behind that film that they still paid you that is wonderful that they yes did. they did mm -hmm. that is wonderful that that speaks volumes it we, does we need to talk about pamela anderson because uh <laughs> from what i heard she knew something was going to happen but she didn't know what yeah uh, do you have any insight into uh her in this film well, that's exactly right. She knew something was going on and she didn't know what. And when you don't know what it is and he springs out on your ass and throws a, a, a burlap bag over your head and kidnaps you, <laughs> shit, you don't know what the fuck is going on. Is this part of the shit? Is this really happening? You know, so she was like legit terrified. <laughs> I like the fact when when uh, when she runs away and then you see her turn that you could actually cut you could see her laughing <laughs> <laughs> well yeah because after you figure it out you know <laughs> yeah you're already gone though by that time though but i didn't even figure it out like oh my god she I ran mean, pretty good in high heels didn't she oh yeah oh yeah um what i haven't caught up on this but what does she think about being part of this today you know you know, I don't know. I never hear anybody at, uh, interview her about it, and they should. They interview me, they interview Ken, and they interview Sasha, but I don't know if 
Pamela gets interviewed, you ought to definitely submit a, a, a request because I would like I would love to to know what her feelings were about it. Now Pamela and I became cool, and Pamela did Dancing with the Stars, mm -hmm. and I was able to be one of her guests to come see her alive at Dancing with the Stars. It was great. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, she certainly knew how to run in high heels. <laughs> Yeah, that was impressive. Just especially since I just had two knee operations. I like that bitch is a rock star. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the one scene I wasn't prepared for when I saw that is the new uh -huh. wrestling in the hotel. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure. I like if if it was me, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> Well, um, Sasha has a, a, a zero embarrassment gene in his body. Exactly. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't get embarrassed, you know, but he doesn't ask you to do anything that he wouldn't do. You know, he doesn't make you be the butt of the joke all the time. He's always doing some shit, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it was getting Ken to do it with his out of shape ass. It was getting Ken to do it that I would think would, would have been difficult, but I don't know what the process was to get Ken to do it at I straight audition. So I don't know. That's that's a conversation to be had. You could do a whole series, me and Ken and Pamela go. I believe in you. <laughs> you know what? I think I will. I would love to get Pamela Anderson on here. I'm, I'm sure you would. I would yeah. too. Yeah ask her about that but um yeah that scene i wasn't prepared for it i'll tell you them running through the hotel nude and like without shame i like it when comedies take chances <laughs> you know because i've seen so many of them that are so by the numbers yeah it's great to see movies that are like i'm going to show you something you haven't seen you know <laughs> Yeah, and we've just about seen it all. And 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 it was it was so hilariously shocking. See, the thing about the it it could have just been shocking, but mm. to be so funny and be so shocking is what made it the shock a little less shocking. You know what I mean? It was it's the, the humor was the cushion for the shocking shit that you're looking at, you know, which was shocking. I mean, he took a dump in front of trump tower what did he know that we didn't know you know uh, yeah <laughs> you know yep yeah. yep he, he was foreseeing the future <laughs> yeah, absolutely he's a genius yep now borat too um i think it's wonderful that yeah. they that they uh paid you for that um yeah. Can you give us a little insight on what you were supposed to do with that and how they were a, how they worked around that in the script? Well, you know, I don't know any more now than I did the first time I was about to do it. You know, I don't know exactly what the plot was going to be with, uh, or else I can't remember what the plot was going to be with he and I. But we were definitely going to pick back up some kind of way because that's what, you know, the sequel is, you know. So I don't know. I, I don't know what they wanted me to do. I just knew that I was about to fucking do it, whatever it was. Okay, here we go, you know. I reprieve a roll. So I'm like, okay. I'm surprised they didn't do the uh, the, ser the search for Pamela Anderson. <laughs> Pam don't want no part of that shit no more. <laughs> She's like, I'm cool. Mm -mm. <laughs> so. Now you did uh, a couple movies with Eddie Murphy. Now Eddie Murphy is easily one of the funniest comedians. Such a great impressionist too. Yes. He is so funny, raw, delirious, and plus he, you know, he was in the original Coming to America, directed by John Landis, and uh, yes. and here he is with Coming to America too, and you were in Dolom Dolomite as well. Yes. Uh, how did you uh, get those projects, and, and what was it like working with Eddie Murphy? Well, luckily for me, I did not freak out or anything when I worked with Eddie because I had a previous relationship with, with Eddie. I knew his brother, Charlie, the late Charlie Murphy, very well. 
Charlie and I had done movies together. We had done stand up together. We'd been in Vegas together. We'd been in clubs together. And um, Eddie and I had seen each other in clubs together. And um, at like the premiere of Norbit, I think I met him there too. And um, we had had a conversation before and even had taken pictures before. But but um, I had to audition. Um, did you see Dolomite? I have. And I actually only have my Blu-rays I play on my television. I actually don't have it set up to... Who's uh, still playing Blu-rays, old man? Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. I, you I do stream stuff. Come on with the, with the program. You got to start streaming. You know what? I'm actually in a little apartment here, and I'm only here... I was in the house I grew up in for 47 and a half years. I, was, so I, I, cool. I love that. I joke with people and say my parents had to leave there because I wouldn't. <laughs> but the <laughs> truth, of the, truth of the matter is my dad got ALS and he's had it for seven years. And uh, my mom's got Parkinson's and they had to move into my grandparents old house because there was less stairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I I still remained at the old house with my cat who's running around here somewhere and um, until the house could get get sold. And that's another thing that my younger brother was dealing with because he ha mm -hmm. he handles all this because he's better at it than I am. You know? I get you. I, yeah. I got it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm in this little small apartment. I've still got boxes around me of stuff that's not even unpacked because the whole idea is is that my um we want to either build or buy a house where my brother and is wife is all going to lead back to why you don't have uh Netflix yeah. and shit like that. <laughs> yep because it's uh, the plan is is that they're going to live upstairs I'm going to live downstairs my brother told me that when I'm set up in the new place he says you're going to have you're not going to be watching your blu-rays he said you're going to be having streaming Yes, he's right. Yeah. So um, I think, yeah, that's where I'm going. Right <laughs> now, I don't have it, but I'm certainly uh, open to that uh, when the time comes, you know? Well, you got a computer, so you can always just put it on that, lay in bed and watch shit on that. Everybody does that. I actually work as a cleaner. That's what I do for money. I've been an essential worker. I do this for fun. I love this, you know. Yeah, well, this is fun. This is fun. I'm able to uh, direct more people to uh, Borat. I'm able to talk about, uh, I mean, I haven't seen Coming to America 2, but I'm happy to promote that movie. And you know? will see it in due time. It's yes. not going anywhere, that's for sure. And yeah. it's a beautiful flick. When you see it, you'll be like, gosh, I should have I should have seen this sooner. This is great. That's yeah, great. yeah. Well, um, yeah, and they didn't have John Landis back. Now, John Landis, of course, had directed a lot of great comedies mm -hmm. in the 80s. The Blues Brothers, of course, Animal House was the 70s. Uh, didn't uh, he work with Michael? Yep, yep. He... Uh, he has done a lot of great stuff and um so he did coming to america and of course he did trading places so he's worked with eddie murphy a couple times well our director was craig brewer mm -hmm. and he did the dolomite and then then did coming to america as well and and in the process of of uh, auditioning for this role that was in dolomite i actually had seven callbacks so during that time the director and I got to be very friendly and Eddie and I already had a relationship. So even though I didn't get cast for the role that I had auditioned for, they put me in another role and then subsequently threw me into coming to America too because they wanted me to be there. And um, uh, I didn't have to audition for that. They just, you know, blessed me with that one. So it was a relationship between Eddie and, and, and me and the director and me. They got me into that one, I believe. Yes, I'm going to look that up here because I want to see who else is in these movies. <laughs> well, everybody from the original Coming to America, except for maybe three people, was in it again 33 years later. And, you know, all the way up to James Earl Jones, you know, Wesley Snipes, Rick Ross, and 
uh, Tracy Morgan, Arsenio, of course, myself, Leslie Jones, and a bunch of people. Yeah, you got quite the uh, the track record here. You were in So I Married an Axe Murder, so you worked with Mike Myers as well. On his first film, before he ever started doing any of the Austin Powers stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did this after he did Wayne's World, but still. <laughs> yeah, but he hadn't done Austin Powers yet. No, he was great in Austin Powers. International Man of Mystery. Yeah. The Rock. You were in that. Yeah. With Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage. Yeah, that was, the, that was the second. Mike Myers movie was the first movie I ever did, first major motion picture, and The Rock was the second, and that was the movie that I was able to join the union in. I had when I got cast for that, I got I got my credentials, you know. All about Steve. Now, do you remember working with Sandra Bullock? I I, de I definitely do because uh, it wasn't just Sandra Bullock; it was also Sandra Bullock and um. Ken, okay, uh, Sandra Bullock and uh, Ken Jung and um, oh, Ken Bra Jung and Bradley hilarious. and Bradley Cooper was in that movie as well. Yeah. Um, oh wow! Think like a man. I've I've seen all of these in the theater. <laughs> wow. That's my boy, <laughs> Adam Sandler. <sighs> Oh, wow. That Take was it. as crazy as doing Borat for me, you know, being the the character that I was. <laughs> well, Hotel Transylvania. So you worked with uh, Adam Sandler a couple times, too. Three times, to be exact. Three? Yeah, because uh, that's my boy, Hotel Transylvania 1 and 2. Okay. You see, I've seen these movies once, so it's... That's like 2012. Yeah, it's been a while. Believe, I can't believe it's been so long. It seems like yesterday. <laughs> and of course, A Star is Born. That was great. And see, I had met Bradley Cooper on Sandra's movie. We mm -hmm. stayed friends. And when he did A Star is Born, he threw me, a, threw me a bone in that. Relationships, you know? How wonderful was Lady Gaga in that movie, you know? For somebody who... She's been in movies, but she, not not anything like this. She was wonderful. Yeah. She was wonderful. Okay, Dolomite is my name. I'm going to look down through that here. Okay. Okay. See, this is a movie that didn't even come to our theaters either. Yeah. And it, I'm one of these people that still goes to the movie theater. I mm -hmm. love going to the movie theater. Me too. Yep. So, uh, Dolomite. Okay. And it looks like uh, they got Eddie. Eddie Murphy is good at going and uh, making himself look different than his regular appearance. Because, you know, with the nutty professor, even with this, he doesn't yeah. look like his tech typical self and norbit norbit yep norbit one of my favorites and you like um, and he was really tough people there's another movie he did that people slept on it's called mr church and that was a really 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 deep great wonderful movie that was eddie at his best to me just like when he did dream girls and and just such a great performance you know I was sad Eddie Murphy did not get the Oscar for Dream Girls, and because he was so good in that, and you could yes, see he that he, was. yeah. Well, comedians have it hard, you know. I mean, I know Bill Murray uh, was up for uh, Lost in Translation, and and he didn't get that, and and there are some comedians have it rough. I'll even say it for non-comedians. Sylvester Stallone, I thought for sure was going to get it for Rocky Balboa <laughs> or Creed. Or maybe it was Creed, Creed, Creed he was up for. And he, he didn't get it. And it was like, um, you, I got to wonder whether there is, it's just people. But don't it's because do the people who are on the boards of these things are old, conservative, white Man, that mm -hmm. is why the movies that we love, we love, uh, 
don't stand stand a chance because they want to see shit about the British Empire and all this other bullshit. And 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 that's what's changing now. The people that are in the decision making seats and the directors and people working on the crews are becoming more multicultural because of the climate of right now. And you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, uh, things are things are changing. So when we can get more adverse people, a better representation of the real money spending people that see these movies and get people who think like them, then that's when movies that we care about will stand a chance to to win. Absolutely. Well, talk about doing stand up, especially like I, I heard that you're even uh, doing stand up now. Like, like talk about um, doing like you. You've been working like even during the pandemic. Am I correct on that? I worked doing my YouTube show that I actually uh-huh. got to get ready for pretty soon. Uh-huh. But I do it every Wednesday, and it's called Hey Lunell. And I started it probably 11 months ago and um, it's doing pretty good because I'm not, you know, a YouTuber, you know, I'm just Linnell, you know what I'm saying? I'm not one Mm -hmm. of these young people that's spending my time sitting in front of the computer trying to build my base. It builds on its own and where where it's at is fine with me, you know? Um, And so I do, I have been doing that, but I didn't do any virtual comedy shows. I refuse a lot of times there's internet connection glitches and shit and now your joke falls flat because your punchline got stepped on and you got to go back and it loses something and i said no i will hold off until i go back on the road where people can see me in person and now i'm going to be going on the road in june and starting off in indianapolis indiana and i've got st louis and atlanta and raleigh north carolina and um new york i go back to caroline so all in the next two months. Well, I got my two new knees and I got my new schedule and I'm about to be off to the race. I'm going to subscribe to your YouTube channel. What'd you say it was called again? Hey Lunell. Hey Lunell. Yes, H-E-Y-L-U-E-N-E-L-L for the people listening. H-E-Y-L-U-E-N-E-L-L, hey Lunell. Hey Lunell. Yes, maybe that is where I saw that clip. <clears throat> if you have that on there. I don't know. I was looking up some clips of you uh, prior to this interview uh, a few days ago. So uh, It might be on my website or, or it's definitely out there in YouTube land. You know? <laughs> so. pl- plug your website on here. Okay, my website is heylunel.com. Once again, H E Y. L-U-E-N-E-L-L dot com. And that's where my show dates will be posted and the merchandise you can purchase and old clips and pictures and uh, stuff like that. That's on my website. Well, I often I ask people that, um, I don't know how often you get to do the conventions, like the comic cons or whatnot, because uh, especially with the COVID situation, you would, you, but you'd think Barat would be a big hit with a comic con, you know? I'm sure it was, but I wasn't there when they were out doing that. Most of the publicity was done by Ken and Sasha because remember, I was supposed to not be an actress and people thought I was a real prostitute in real life. And I couldn't tell nobody that I wasn't for six months because I was under gag order. Mm-hmm. So people, you know, I would go to a bar for during the first six months and sit down and people were going, that's, that's, that's not a hooker, that's not a hooker. <laughs> well, here's a question I ask all my guests. What's the most unique thing you've ever been asked to sign? Well, there's the regular old penises and stuff like oh, that. Oh, real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've signed, I've signed many breasts, just like a rock star. I've signed some foreheads. Um, I've signed money. Uh, I think I signed a banana one time. <laughs> Maybe the banana. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard, uh, uh, um, I don't have tattoos, but I, I heard that some of these people that 
get signatures on their body will get them tattooed on themselves. Yeah, I think that's mostly rock stars or rap stars, but I don't think nobody's getting Lunell tattooed on them. But if they do, let me know. Hit me at heylunell.com and let me know if you got my name tattooed on your body. I would love to meet you. <laughs> Absolutely. You got any charities that uh, you're active with? Well, not really, because I, you know, just like you were saying about church, Mm -hmm. um, I have to be very careful about, you know, donations and shit like this, because there's so many scammers and you want your money to go to what you want it to go to, not just not, nothing else, you know, you want to make sure. So I usually do my stuff like in, you know, little increments and little things and little spurts of kindness, you know, as Oprah would say, random acts of kindness and stuff like that. So that's, that's, that's what I do mostly. Well, that works. That works. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you got your tour coming up. Um, how much preparation do you go through to, to do a tour? Like well, you know, I tell you, we've had a year to fucking think about it. Don't you think? So um, I can't compare this year to any other year as far as preparation goes. I don't really prepare much. I, you know, see the stuff or think things. I'll put a little bullet note down, mm -hmm. just a bullet note, but I don't really write down and script out what I'm going to say word for word. That's not how I flow, you know. I'm more of, and to use a rap term, terminology, I'm more of a freestyler, you know, but I, I know the subjects I want to talk to, and then you have to be able to wave them with, you know, segues that that make it make it all make sense. And ideally you've told a perfect story, a beginning, a middle, and the end. It, it, that's that's what I feel in being a headliner. That's the style of comedy that I do. Absolutely. Well, I hope you come down this way. Well, you know what? I used to come to Montreal mm -hmm. and do the Montreal uh, Comedy Festival. Mm -hmm. I've done that twice and that was a blast. And I have performed in Toronto and Montreal both. So, you know, if the, I'll, I'll certainly be vaccinated. So if the, if the uh, you know, thing, if the opportunity arises. Have you gotten your uh, vaccination already? Yeah, I'm halfway through. I have to get the other half um, coming up. I hear various things about that. Uh, did you feel ill or anything afterwards or? No. No? no. Okay. But I haven't I, had the second one yet. But you, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna have it in about a week. But you know what? I gotta. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to um, cut this short because you know I gotta get ready for my my. Absolutely, show. absolutely. <laughs> and you know us girls, we gotta you know do 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 do. Oh, you look fine. Thank you. I you want you to check it out now. You you pull up on because you got YouTube. You can access on your. I can. On so heylunell.com. You come give me a visit. We archive. I mean, hey Lunell. On YouTube, we archive all the shows. So, you know, you can always go back and look at one or whatever like that. We have the titles and stuff for what it might be about and all that stuff. Well, I was but say a special thanks to uh, Walisa for yeah. setting this up. Uh, she was such a wonderful, wonderful lady. That's and, wonderful. Uh, yeah, I love her. Yep. And um, I know there was a mix up on the, the day, but uh, that's OK. That's OK. Probably me, actually. Well, you know I what? Been. I was here. So we're good. We're good. You know, you know, this gives me something to smile about. Um, before I let you go, would you mind doing a plug for my show? I don't mind at all. What you want me to say, Ray? Just state your name and uh, say you're watching uh, Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert. Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert. Yeah. Okay. Hey, everybody, this is me, Lunell, the original bad girl of comedy, and you are watching Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert. Did I say it wrong? Nope, you said it perfectly. I said it right? Oh, yeah. thank God. Okay. And we're celebrating 15th anniversary of Borat. Yeah. Ooh, thank you, everybody who's ever watched it. Thank you to the people who are about to watch it because, baby, it's not for the week. It is really some shocking, 
funny, gut busting, tears down your face. Oh my God. But there's a lesson in all of it. If you watch it and really take it in. Am I, am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Lunell, for allowing me the honor of chatting with you. I appreciate that. It, it means a lot. My pleasure. Anytime. God bless you. You take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>